All right, welcome in to another day of our daily devos in the Psalms. Pastor Rick here, and we are jumping into Psalm 145, part two. We did uh, verses one through seven yesterday, and we're going to go ahead and see if we can knock out the rest of the chapter today in our devos. And so we're going to start in verse eight, and uh, you scroll down to the bottom of it. It's got 21 verses in it, so uh you know we've we've climbed taller mountains than this together folks so i think we can make it uh before we get started if you want to like and comment subscribe all that good stuff maybe share it with a friend or two uh that would be fun you can just grab the link and text it to people you can share it on your social media anyone any way you want to share sharing is caring folks sharing is caring so uh good morning and Happy whatever day it is for you watching this. Um, so here we go. Verse 8. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Gracious and compassionate. Slow to anger and great in faithful love. Um, you know, we could probably just stop right there and have our devos just around this one verse. Um, the Lord is gracious, gracious grace, you know, is unmerited favor. It is, uh, actually supernatural empowerment, um, to have a grace on you to do something. So the Lord is gracious in that he is better to us than we deserve. Uh, he's also a merciful Mercy, you know, mercy is not getting things that you do deserve. He's maybe oversimplified definitions, but it at least helps, you know, helps process it. So mercy is not getting stuff that you do deserve. And grace is getting things that you don't deserve in the good sense. So the Lord is gracious and compassionate. The compassionate part is pretty, pretty powerful. And Jesus coming in the flesh and living life and then dying on the cross for us, you know, um, it's like um, it's like the movie about the crucifixion of Jesus. It's called the passion of the Christ, the, like the suffering of Jesus, passion of the Christ. And so when you take this word compassion, it's a, it's a compound word. And so it it's like to suffer with. To be compassionate towards someone is to suffer with them, to enter into their place, to not hold them at a distance, but to come close to them and be with them in the midst of their suffering. So we have a God that gives you things that you, that gives you good things that you don't deserve and empowers you to do the things that he's called you to. And he comes and suffers with you when you're in a place of suffering. When you do wrong, he is slow to anger. And then he is great in faithful love, meaning his love will continue on and on and on. Goodness gracious, what? What an incredible God that we serve. So now when you look back at what we talked about yesterday, so if I just scroll up here, I will exalt my king, the God, the, my God, the king, and bless your name forever and ever. I'll bless you every day. I'll praise your name forever and ever. You know, he did say that his greatness is unsearchable. So started to talk about proclaiming awe-inspiring acts and de declaring his greatness but now we're starting to see some of the why behind why am I exalting? Why am I praising? Why am I lifting his name on high? Well, because he's gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger and great in faithful love. The Lord is good to everyone. His compassion rests on all he has made. All you have made will thank you, Lord. The faithful will bless you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom and will declare your might. Are you speaking of the glory of the kingdom of God? Are you declaring his might? 
informing all people of your mighty acts and of the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His kingdom is right now. It's for it's forever, obviously, just like it just said. But his kingdom is right now, too. And that's what we need to be about as a collection of believers, as as a collection of disciples, is to be be thinking about things that build the kingdom. Certainly not thinking about things that build our own kingdom or build our church or built like we want to be thinking about things that build the kingdom of God. Your rule is for all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his actions. So every time you pick up the word of God, every time you learn, you read, you study, you memorize, remember that he's faithful in all of his words. The Lord helps all who fall. He raises up all who are oppressed. All eyes look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. It really is in him that the satisfaction that your soul longs for is where that's at. It's located in him, his open hand. He will open his hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all his acts. To me, this is another one to like remember to probably journal about a little bit. You know, I talk about that a lot, but just to help you process the depth of that particular verse, that scripture is to journal about what does it mean that he's righteous in all of his ways and, and faithful in all of his acts. Those are the things that begin to build the solid foundation of our relationship with God. The Lord is near to all who call out to him, all who call out to him with integrity. Uh, man, I love that verse. The Lord is near to all who call out to him. So, and if you're feeling distant from God today, call out to him today. Reach out. Draw near unto God and he will draw near unto you. And then I think all who call out to him with integrity. You got to be calling out to him with your whole heart. It's like in Jeremiah where it says, if you seek him with your whole heart, you will find him. There, there's no there's no half waysies, you know, like God wants your whole heart. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him and he hears their cry for help and saves them. The Lord guards all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. He guards all those who love him. And then it obviously shows his uh, disdain for wickedness. My mouth will declare the Lord's praise. Let every living thing bless his holy name forever and ever. So our action here, let your mouth declare the Lord's praise today. As you go through these verses and you see these incredible things about who God is, going back to the very first verse, he's gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and faith, great and faithful love, good to everyone, compassion resting on all that he's made. Take all of these things. Take all of these things and let your mouth declare the Lord's praise. Don't keep quiet about it. Share it with other people. Then every living thing would bless his name forever and ever. How will they know unless someone tells them? Let's tell people about the incredibleness of our God. But first and foremost, you probably need to take a little time today to sit and to think about how awesome he is in your own world. Make sure that your heart is first convinced of it before you go trying to tell other people. With that, I can't imagine how you could not be encouraged, but I hope you're encouraged today. Hope you take some time to really like think and process through these verses. There's so much good stuff. 
for you to be strengthened by. So I hope you have fun with that. God bless you. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you tomorrow.